problems. Let's try to discuss inputs and outputs. C programming language has inbuilt libraries to handle inputs and outputs. Their basic input function is called as scanf, basic output function called as printf. So far, you have you learn printf. We will in this session we will discuss in detail how printf works and especially how scanf works. They are input function scanf works. Scanf function has two parts basically. First section is called formatted uh, string. So that tells the system which type of inputs you're going to read and then the variables where you store the values. So you remember our printf functions that is output function in there we use printf and this call it as formatted string so in this formatted string we test the system please print c programming on the terminal after that we return zero we exit from the program then in the second program as example it has a variable integer type variable called test int initial value phi assigned to that and then it has a printf function in the printf function you see this part called it as formatted string and this is the variable where we want to uh, print so in the formatted string we has a data called number equal and then we have a percentage sign D. That means when we compile and run the program, the value of test integer assigned here. So we will get number equal the value on the terminal. So in the basic printf function for the C output function, you see it only has formatted string and this the second printf function has two sections formatted strings and the variables where we can have multiple variables so in the formatted strings which we have to tell the compiler we are to print those variables and how so that means the formatting type so that is how c output works in order to learn c inputs so we need to introduce different types of variable which we call it as pointer variables so the pointer variables basically holds address of a variable so java or python like programming language are not support pointers c support the pointers or the memory address so since it has a pointer variables we can handle certain type of problems in very efficient manner so pointer variables are the special features which C has. Similarly, pointer variables make confusion in the young new programmers. But if you understand what pointer means and how C operates the pointer at the very beginning, you may not be, you may not get any trouble at the end. So so I guess you know what is variable. Variable is the place where we store some data. It has a name and then storage box or storage memory location. So each memory location in a computer has what we call it has an address. Each memory location has an address. In the pointer variables can store those addresses. Regular variables store the values. Pointer variables only store the addresses. When you define a pointer variable, we need to tell the computer, we need to tell the computer which kind of type of this pointer variable. 
whether that variable is pointing to the integer string or character and so on so in the c input function call it as scanf so scanf require a pointer into the function so that's why we discuss pointer variables so basically when you define a variable and in case we want to get the memory address of this particular variable we can put ampersand sign in front of the variable ampersand sign commonly called the reference operator so using this operator we can get the address of a variable so the scanf format or the syntax look like here so we type scanf and first part is a formatted string in there we have to tell the system which type of variable we're going to read and then put a comma and tells the address of the variables we are going to read so if you have a variable called var here we have to pass the address of var so in order to get the address of var we need to put the ampersand sign so for example if you if i want to further explain that so let's see this program so in this program there is a variable called integer initial value is 5 so using this printf function we print this value 5 on the terminal after that we we let's say we want to print the address of this variable so then we can put ampersand sign in front of the variable then it returns the address then we can print that so usually addresses are unsigned integers so then formatted character we use it u percentage sign u so output of this particular function is actually first printf will print the value of the variable that is 5 second printf will print the address of this variable that is some number so how you define a pointer variable in c is actually after the type of the data data type we need to put star so and then give a pointer variable name so for example if you want to have a pointer variable called p which store in the address of integers so we say int star and p so it tells the compiler we need a place called p where are we going to store addresses of integer variables So when you want to access with or work with the pointers, ampersand sign is very useful. So we, by putting that in front of any variable, we can get address of that. Similarly, if you have a pointer variable if you, and ask the system to print that pointer P, for example, it prints the address of P. So let's say we want to get the value which store in this memory location then we have to use the operator star okay maybe we can see those in the bit in the program before we move on otherwise you might get, get you might get confused okay few few things we can discuss the first thing is we will discuss how this different c output uh, formats works that is printf works so i'll take my simple program so let's say we have integer which has the value 10 right and then integer x we have value 20 so when you want to print x and y both on the terminal so we can use printf and say d that tells the system we want to print the integer value d here uh, integer value here and then we can put a space and then we put another formatted uh, value here called percentage d that tells the system print the value y 
So it say print the value x and print the value y and then return it. Now let's compile this program and run it. Compile and then run it. So you see it print 20 and 10. It just print the values. So then you don't have any idea about what is x, what is y. So we could clear it out by putting some formatting things here. So for example, I can say here value of x equal and then d. Then what happened? Value of x will print on the screen and then it print the value of x. Then I can put space and then say value of y equal. Then value of y will print on the terminal and instead of d here, the y value of y will replace in this place. Value of x will replace this place. So the formatted string here tells in, in principle, how would you want to get the output? So for example, now I save this program, uh, compile and run it. You might see I get value of x equal 20 and value of y equal 10. So it's very meaningful. So that's, uh, sorry, uh, that's how it works. So similarly, let's say I, I uh, let's uh, discuss a little bit of pointer here. So let's mm -hmm. say I want to create a pointer variable which storing the address of integer. So then how I want to define it, it's like int the pointer variable name or the identifier is p and maybe I can initially tell it is zero, something like that. So then if I want to store some address of address of integer to the pointer p, so maybe I can say like that, if p, I can get the address of maybe y. So I get the address of y and store in the pointer variable called p. Right? So then p holds the address of y. So then, if I want to print value of y, either I can tell y, or maybe I can say point uh, star p. That means, let's try, then you might understand. I come by and I run that. This is sorry, it's compiled, and then I run that. You see, I got those values. Let's let's go there. So I want to print value of now x, and instead of y, what I print here, I don't put y here. What I print here, star p. Star p means p has the address of y, p has the address of y, star operator tells, please print the value in this particular address. So value in this particular address is actually y, so that's why I get 10. So if I put x here, x here, then what's happened? Then address of x will be stored in p. So when I say star p, it prints the value in this particular address. Actually, then it is a value of x, not value of y. So let's say we get, when I compile and run that, we get 20 in both places. So similarly, I will, if I want to see the, uh, uh, the value of x, and maybe address of s, I say address of 
address of x. Addresses are unsigned integers, so I have to see u. So I have to say x and maybe p. So because p has the address of x, so when I save, compile, and run that, you see, this is x, this is value of this x, this is address of this x. So in other words, this address in the memory store the integer value 20. So using C, we can manipulate those address wise or basically using variables. We can manipulate the data using variables or like pointers. So instead of like P here, if, if you wish, we can we can directly put address x so ampersand has give me the address of this particular variable star in front of the pointer variable tells give me the value referring to this address <coughs> right so let's compile and run that so you see so stay so each time when you run it, you get different address because randomly when you compile and run it, allocate a place to store this variable. So this time it get this address to store y, x, this time it get this address to store x. Right. Okay, now let's see how do you scan it to read the data for that. I use, let's say I would like to simply read an integer. So there I have a simple program like that. So you see here, uh, I have main method and I define the integer variable called test in. And then I have a printf function where I say pre enter an integer. And after that, here, how do I use scan? Can a function, first part is formatting part, there I need to tell the system which type of data I'm going to read. After that, I have to tell the system address of a memory location, which I am going to store this data. Address, I'm going to store this in the variable integer. So in the scan a function, what I should pass it, address of that particular variable. How do I get the address of that particular variable? I need to put ampersand inside to get the address of that variable. So then when scanf runs, system will let me to enter some integer value. The result will store in this memory location. And using printf, I print them on the terminal. Let's see, let's compile <coughs> and run this program. Right? Now I run n of how. So it asked me to en enter the integer. I type that. So you see it's printed on the terminal. <coughs> Similarly, I can read floating point number, decimal numbers. <coughs> and there I say printf and then my formatting string uh, string is f for floating point numbers and my variable type it's also a float then here i say printf number and floating point number <clears throat> so far we formatted integers how do we for format decimal numbers is like that we put percentage sign dot and after that, we tells number of decimal places we need. And then we put F. It tells we want to print the number has with two decimal places on the terminal. Now let's compile and run this program. Uh, GCC read and then I run that.
So you see, it's asked me to enter in this time now the floating point number. So it reads that enter. Right? So in, if I want more decimal places, like let's say three decimal places, so then I need to change it uh, to three. So here I put five decimal places. Okay, fine. So now compile and run that. So I type 1.234. See? 1.2340 0, 0. because I asked it to print it with a five decimal place. Let me run this program and enter different number with five decimal places, maybe six decimal places. But even though you see I enter the number with six decimal places, it prints up to five decimal places because I ask it to print up to five decimal places. So that's how we read a floating point number. Okay, let's back to the lecture. So you understood C output. So usually we use addresses in the scanning. So how do I get, how do we get the address? Using ampersand sign, we can get the address of a particular variable. So by printing D and the variable name, we can get the value stored in this variable. By putting ampersand sign and printing using a formatted character U, we can see the address of this particular variable. So you understand that now. So for, as I mentioned, pointer variables, we can define by giving a data type star and the variable name. So here I create a pointer variable, integer pointer variable called P that store the addresses of integers. Then there are two operators we work with these pointers. Always ampersand operators returns us the address of this particular variable and star operators returns the value which pointing to or value of this address. Right. So the objective of this lecture is to read C input outputs. C pointers we will discuss later on in detail. So let's back to the C input function, scan it. So as I demonstrated, if you want to read the integer in the C program, we have to first of all define that as an integer variable. You see here I'm defining the integer called test integer. And then I print that on the terminal and ask the user to enter the integer. So then I use function called scan it. And in the scan it first, first part, I say I am going to read the integer. How do I say that? using percentage p. So then scale function, I have to pass the address of this variable. So I put ampersand sign in front of this variable name. So it reads the integer and store this in the address of this test integer variable. Address or the variable in test engine. So simply if I want to print that, I say, D integer and the variable name, it prints that on the term. So that's how simply C input function, sorry, input function scan it and output function printf works. So if, in case we want to uh, input a decimal number or the floating point number, what I would like to, what I need to change is only this space formatted string on the scan a function. So instead of D now, I have to put F. So my floating point variable is called F. So I pass the address of a floating point variable to the scan a function. So it reads me the decimal number. So after we enter that, if using print a function, I can print them on the terminal. In order to print them, I use again, percentage F or formatted string called F. 
percentage f to print it in a decimal format. So in case you want to specify how many decimal places require, so we have to tell here a dot and the number that is how many decimal places. So as you may understood that I have already demonstrated, I think you understood it. Similarly, we can read characters, letters. So in case we want to need characters, we have to define the character variable. And in the scanf function, we should use a formatted string percentage sign C for characters and pass address of C. So it can read them character. So characters handle in C as integers. So when you read a character, actually that memory location store the ASCII value of this particular character. So, in, so because of that, when you print F, we can print it as a character or we can print it as ASCII value. So in the printf function, if you want to print the value store in this place as character, we need to give a formatted strings percentage C. If you want to print the data in the as the ASCII format, so we have to give D, that means integer. So ASCII value of C is D. ASCII value of C, this place will replace by the character. This place will replace by the integer or the ASCII value. Right. Now you remember our second problem we discussed in the first session. So write a program to read and print your name. So the flowchart is start the program, read the name, print the name, and stop. Input, output, stop. So we wrote, we use scratch in the first lecture to do that. So how do you do it in C? It's very sim simple. So we have to then first define a variable to store those names. So for that, we need a character variable. So the, it's called name. And you see it has a square bracket and number here. So this type of character variable call it as a character array. Arrays refers to sequence of same type of data. So if you want to have store more than one element of data and access them using the same name, we define the data structure, which call it as array. We will learn arrays later on. So here we use in the C, there are no data type called string. Strings consist of letters. C store character. C use character data type to store letters. If just one character, it's a letter variable. If a set of characters that is string, we need to use a character array, or otherwise we have to tell name, whatever the variable name. And after that, we need to tell how many characters we're going to store there. Here in this example, 256 characters. So then in the scan a function, you see, we need to use a formatted string called S. S represents string. So we say we would like to use a sequence of characters or what we call a string. So then we put the variable name. So here you see in this particular variable, we are not putting ampersand signs because it is array. When you define an array or sequence of same variable, or what we call array, so usually this name location is address. It consists the address of the sequence. Because of that, we don't need to specifically get the address of this name. So we just pass S and the name. It reads the sequence of characters and store in this character array. And then if you want to print them, so we use print a function and with the formatted string S and then the give the array name or what you call it as string name or it's a character array name in other words and it prints the data which store in this array so that's how 
we could read the name and print it on the terminal. Similarly, you remember our problem three. So there we are asked to add hello and print the name. So, so our flowchart is start the program, read the name and add hello to the name and then print the answer and stop. So here we can do it in C. So here our scratch code, here is the C code. So how that works. So here again, we need to place to store that name and we ask the user to enter the name and then scan a function will read the name. Then we need to concatenate. The concatenate, we can directly use printf function with the formatter string. In the printf, we say hello and space and put the S and name. After we do so, similar to printing integers, system will print hello and space first. And this S will represent by value of this array, that is our name. So it will print hello and our name on the terminal. Let's see how it works. Uh, so I have a program for read name. Sorry, read uh, name. So in this read name program, so you see I am creating a character array for name, which has 20 characters maximum and then say enter the name and use slashes formatted string and the variable name yeah no ampersand sign because it's an array and then it say print it. your name is after that i say the place where the system should print the value of the name and then put the name variable then system automatically get the value of the name you enter here and replace percentage x. So you then see your name is whatever you type here on the terminal. So let me compile and run that. And when I run that, a dot out file so it asks me to enter the name i enter my cousin so it's up my name so it print only cousin because the printf function stop with the space so it only print when you say printf percentage s it only print characters up to the space so for example if i type like that it get all name right it's there are different formatting methods available if you want to even print space so basically slash the percentage s print the letters until it hit the space character and stop. So that's why I stop here. So if you want to use the same program uh, to kind of say hello to the name, so you here just you want to change, right? So whatever you change, you change here. And I say hello and my name. So when compiles it and run that, cast a name, I say cousin, say hello cousin. So that's how uh, this program works. So reading the name and printing them and reading the name and add hello and printing them. So, so that's how the simple C 
input and output works. So in case you want to see this, how it works, let me show you. So for example, I use my uh, simple test program. So, so instead of now, I would use uh, a character variable maybe to demonstrate character variable called uh, x. Then I say scan if uh, and then percentage C and X address of X. This is not the array, so it should be then address of X. And then I say value of X. Here is a character, so I need to say C. Then ASCII value. I'm not going to get as address, ASCII value. Right? Then uh, for I have to type uh, D because if I tell it, print it in ASCII format, ASCII, ASCII of X is we say maybe B, then X. My, I can print the X in as a character by putting C. I can print the X, ASCII value X, by putting D formatting string. So, sorry. So I then save it and compile. Oops. I did some mistakes. Uh, sorry, I forget to close the formatted string here. So when you compile a program and got errors like that, you don't need to upgrade it. You have to go back and check to see if it's correct. Simple mistake created this much of errors. So I have corrected it. Now it gets compiled. Then I run the program like that. Actually, it stopped here asking me to enter the character. I enter Q. So you see it print value of Q. S key of Q is this. So I run the program back. Maybe I this time I type capital A. So you see it's printed a value as character here and as key of a65 like that you you understood we could handle the character as letters or as as key what happens basically when you create a character variable in this memory location system actually store the as key value of this character so printf will convert that as key value and print it as character if we put c formatting string like here if you put d formatting string it prints them as ascii right so let's go back to the lecture now uh, let's say now so we discuss how to do that add hello so Let's see whether you can solve these three new problems. In the first problem it has, write a C program to multiply two floating point numbers. Then the second say, write a C program that computes the area of the disk after and reading the radius. And then in the third, it say, write a program to solve two numbers. That means if there, there are two variables like first number and second number, First number store 1.2 and the second number store 2.45. So after executing the program, 2.45 should be assigned to this and 1.2 assigned to that like that. So these variables actually uh, in this 
uh, need to be sapped each to, uh, together. So, so assume 1.2 is here, it goes there. Assume 2.5 is here, it goes there, or whatever. Swapping the numbers. Can you write these two programs? You try yourself as activity, and you can write these two programs, two and three, and upload those to the LMS. I will create a link to that. And first program we will discuss in the class. So in the first program, what you should do to read two numbers and multiply them together. So this is a simple flow chart with, to do that. So we start the program and then we need to read two numbers, floating point numbers for X and Y. And then we have to multiply them and assign the answer to maybe another floating point number. And after that, print that answer and stop the program. Read, start the program, read two numbers, multiply them and assign to the answer. Print the answer, stop. So this is our flowchart. So how our program then look like? Maybe we can write a program together. So we say I say multi dot c new program. So I include stdio dot h like that. So it has main method and record and record. So this is my main method. First of all, I need to have maybe I floating point numbers, two floating point numbers or x, y, and uh, place to store the answer. answer then i need to create this two floating point number so maybe i using printf function and tell the user that i am waiting for system wait for two floating point number like uh, please and uh, two numbers and then say go to uh, new line and stop then scan it where i have to read two floating point numbers like that they are x and y then multiply them together and assign to the answer x multiply y assign to the answer and then i say print the answer print x so maybe i can write like that maybe i say i want to print a value of x in two decimal places then I want to fit multiple sign on the terminal. Then I want to print value of y with uh, two decimal places. And I want to print equal sign on the terminal. And then I want to print uh, answer with maybe four decimal places. And then new line. So that's how my uh, formatted string look like. I close that formatted string and start. First I want to print x, then I want to print y, and answer. Right? Semicolon. Finally, we return zero. Right, so when we write a program, I said we want to do improve the little bit of readability. So, so for that, we need to do indentation and put comments. So how do you indent it? So maybe indentation means actually we 
take this little bit here and tells float this definition here is under the main. So our program start like main function and then it has started here. Maybe we can put that here, starting point, and then here the ending point of this function. And everything else we little bit shift to the right, like that. So you see then anyone can read it properly. So these are the statements or the commands in this printf function. Everybody see it properly. So it say define variables and print it on the terminal read those variables, multiply them, print them with this using the formatted string. So in case we want to tell, improve the readability more, I can put some comment line here saying, this program will to um, verse like that. So then everybody understand what these programs do. So this line will not consider as the compilation. So compiler will skip this line because it's a comment, single line coming. So then this is the program. Okay, let's save and exit and compiling. So it's compiled straight away. So we run that program. So then it asks me to enter two numbers. I enter 2.34 and 1.2. Sorry, I have to enter it in two. I don't. It's a reading a floating point number slash F. Uh, let me check that. I want to read float. Ah, oh, sorry, you see, I made a mistake because I have to put the address. When, when we read numbers, I need to put address, right? So you see it's can if, then f, and the address. So instead of x, I need to put address. Uh, maybe I read it in the two lines like that to make it simple. Scan it. I then put uh, star F. I read it in two lines. Then X. And I read Y. In two lines. So first it scan if the x and then scan if the y. Previously I forgot to put address, ampersand character, so it get stuck. So I so in I want to I try to read it in line, it, it, it didn't work. I hope now it works. Let's see. Save yeah, the screen a bit. I'm fine. I don't know. Three, four, four, five, five, six. You see, take two numbers and multiply these two numbers together and print dance. Maybe I run back. I run like that. So you see, it put the answer on the table. So so that's how we write a program. Let me show you the program back. This is my program. So you see, when you look at this program, it's very clear. The, it has a comment. It has what this program is about. And it clearly defines three variables and print this screen on the terminal and scan the values that read these two values for variable X and Y and multiply those values and assign that answer, multiplication answer to the variable called answer. And using this printf function, it prints it. 
So you see, it has a kind of complicated long formatting string. It's not so complicated if you understand what it is. So this says print the floating point number, print a star character, there's multiplication in the print a floating point number, print the assignment sign, print the floating point number, and print the new string, new, new line string. That's it consists of. So then this point two f x will be replaced here. So you see it here one point two, and star will print as it is. And instead of this percentage dot two f, it take y and format it like that and print that two point four, and then equal sign will print as it is, as it is. and then it says print with four decimal places the next number next number is this replace here with four decimal places stands so that's how we got the answer i think that's it for this session uh, so we will so that's how we uh, print numbers so you should write two other programs one to compute the area of the disk after you enter the radius other to set to set two numbers and these two programs should be uploaded to the labs as activity of this week okay thank you